Father, thank you for all that you have planned this morning. Thank you for just the work you've already done in our hearts. And as you open up your word, Lord, we pray that we would find uh, spiritual food for our souls, Lord. Uh, we just continue to say, we, Lord, we love you. We're desperate for you. Uh, we need you more than physical food, Lord. We need you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, recently, I was reminded of a man who was a part of our church for many years before he passed away. And during the time that he was a part of this family, um, I would go out uh, to where he lived. He lived out in the country and I would spend quite a bit of time with him. Uh, he was an older man and although he had family, um, he was estranged from his family. And as I would sit and talk with him, he would oftentimes just share uh, the desire in his heart to have a relationship with that family. Um, but his seeking was continually denied. Um, one of the people that he would talk about was a son that he had that lived several states away. He would write letters to the son and the letters uh, would not be returned. He would place phone calls um, to where the son worked at an office and leave messages with the secretary and they wouldn't be returned. He would talk about uh, nephews that at one time he had a close relationship with and would work with, um, but they no longer seem interested in spending time with him. When holidays would roll around and we gather with our families, um, he didn't have a family to gather with. And so he would many times gather with some here in this church family. But the interesting thing was, and I, and I should also say, he, he went through some sickness, went through some cancer and so on, and made many hospital visits to see him and never ran into a family member there. Uh, but then the day came that hospice was called in and I showed up to the house and I found a house full of people and come to find out these people were his family. I'd known him for over 10 years and had never met any of these people, but there they were suddenly. Um, and after he passed, um, he had some inheritance to give and rather than giving it to his family, he decided to give it to a friend who was actually a part of his life and so on. But that family would spend the next several years pursuing that inheritance. <laughs> and they would come up with all kinds of ways to try and just get a hold of that. And I gotta tell you, in watching that, it just made me furious because I heard from the man's heart who wanted a relationship with these people and they didn't want it. And I don't know the background, I, I don't. I just know his heart and, and during the last 10 years that I spent with him. But there they were fighting tooth and nail and putting in all kinds of time and effort and money to try and get at what he had to leave behind. I was just so angry. And then the Lord began to speak to my heart. And he said, what about you? And what he began to show me is, I treat the Lord the same way. I pursue a relationship with the Lord. But you know what the Lord was showing me? Is that much of my pursuit of a relationship with the Lord is what he will do for me. You know, Scripture says that uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And it certainly is. But I want to tell you this morning, the Father is looking for so much more out of us. God loves to bless you. Would you hear that? He created you. He loves you. He loves to bless you. He loves to see you do well at things. But you know what he wants and desires more than that? He wants relationship with you. That's what he desires. But you know what? 
Sometimes when he gives me things, I grab them and I run with them. Thanks. I don't really have time for you right now because I'm kind of busy with all of these blessings that you've given me. But when the blessings get taken away, suddenly I get desperate and I want relationship with him. I don't know about you, but I hate it when people use me for something they think they can get out of me. It makes me feel so degraded. So why do I do it to others? Why do I do it to God? God is looking for genuine relationship with us. I love to see my kids do well at things. I love it. I, I, I just, there, there's a piece of me that's just with them. But you know what? My prayer continuously for them is that, Lord, if it will draw them close to you and protect them, let them fail. I'm serious. That's my prayer. My boys were praying for wins this weekend. <laughs> I wasn't saying amen to it because I'm honest. Th this is where my heart's at. I, I, if, if failure will let them know and be close to God, that's what I want. Why? Because I've tasted both. And I got to tell you, God is worth so much more. But I also know this. I also know that there is a flesh within me that gets pulled away by these other things. And I go after them. Even though they make me sick and they hurt me, they, they bring me, you know, a little bit of distraction. And so I go after them and God wants something different. You see, we will go to great lengths if it means getting something back. I am willing to treat God like a politician. You know, some of us are willing to give time to a politician if we think we can get something back. Kind of like we'll give some time and come to a church service or whatever it is. Some of us are even willing to work for a politician if it means we might get something back. You know, maybe put a little sign in your yard. Maybe you'll put a Jesus sign in your yard if it means you'll get a little something back. Maybe you'll teach a class, do something like that, if it means you'll get a little something back. Some of us, some of us are even willing to give money to a politician and his cause if we think we'll get something back. Well, some of us are willing to give Jesus a little money like he needs it if we think we'll get a little something back. I'm not saying this to shame us. I'm saying this to expose what the enemy's trying to do inside of us. Because when it's exposed, we have a choice. We have a choice to say, you know what? I don't want to be that. Jesus set me free. Because here's the good news. God can set you free of it. And God can set me free of it. But in order for him to set me free of it, I must be willing to allow him to expose it. And when he exposes it, instead of saying, oh no, that's not me. No, I'm just all about you, God. No, instead I'm saying, Okay, God, you know what? You're right, and I don't want to be a part of that. Because God's not looking to shame us. God wants to point these things out because he wants to set us free of them. See, the beautiful thing is this. When God sets you free of idol worship, worshiping any kind of blessing that he would give you, you know what? He is free to pour it out on you. Because you will be trusted to give it away. And you're not going to find your identity in it. And you're not going to look for glory in it. You're just going to give it away. Why? Because you have found your identity and you have found everything that you need in the presence of God. That is the path that God wants to take us down. The scripture I want to look at this morning is found in the Gospel of John chapter 2. Jesus makes a short, interesting statement about people that can be applied to all of us. Um, but there's good news beyond it. Jesus had been performing some miracles before this. And because of that, there were people getting interested in him. Why? Because he's obviously a man of power, 
And He can bring them some good things. But here's what Jesus had to say about the people that were starting to trust Him and starting to follow Him. In verse 20, 23, He says, Because, or it says, Because of the miraculous signs Jesus did in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration, many began to trust in Him. Why were they trusting in Him? Because of the miraculous signs. Now, God does this on purpose. He wants us to see that He loves us. He wants us to see that He's powerful and He can provide for us. He wants us to see those things. But it's a double-edged sword. His miraculous signs, His healings, they're a double-edged sword. Because with them, if the enemy can't block them and he can't keep those blessings from reaching you, he at least wants to come in and he wants to use them against you. He wants you to seek after them above the one who's giving. Why? Because he knows they are not enough for you. They cannot save you. They cannot fill you with what you are looking for. Only God himself can. You know, we talk about heaven and all that's going to be in heaven. Listen, without the presence of God, heaven is nothing. That is what is so amazing about heaven is the full presence of God. And that is what every one of us needs, but many of us don't know it. Many of us don't know it because we've never been around it. All we've seen are these things. You know, we, we think to ourselves, why is everyone around us chasing these things? Because they've never experienced God. Some of you have tasted God and you've gone after Him. But the enemy's come in and he's distracted. And if you're like me, you, you've gone off to the side again. But here's the deal. God wants to complete this work that he started in you and me because he wants to set us free so that he can then use us to show who God is to other people. He wants to get me to a place that he can pour out blessing on me and I won't use my friends, family, and neighbors for things I can get from them. I will, genuinely, I will genuinely be a person that lavishes things on people around me just because I'm free of it and I don't need it. I mean, think about it. Who knows people like this? We don't. We know people who can talk like this. You know preachers that can talk like this. You know politicians that can talk like this. You know uh, family members that can talk like this, but then you see the reality of what's really in them. But what if you saw a different reality? What if you saw a person who was willing to just give something away? Going back to that story I first told you, one of the amazing things that just grabbed my heart is that the person that's involved in all this legal stuff that the family is going after, he said to me, you know what? I think I'm just going to let it go. I think God just wants me to let it go. He says, I don't, I don't need it. I mean, if they want it that bad, so what? And I, I just, it grabbed me because I rarely see stuff like that. I mean, we talk about all we need is God and so on, but when it comes down to it, we're willing to stick it to a family member. We're willing to stick it to someone close to us if it gets us some glory or something else. Our flesh is. I, I want to be free of that. I want to be free of that. And, and the reason I say that is because God's been good to me and I've tasted of it. I've tasted of it, but I have not managed to walk in it fully. I, I kind of go back and forth. But I, I want to walk in this. And I know that if I do, God's going to bless me more, but that's not why I want it. Because again, I'm finding my life is not in the things. We were talking in Sunday school how God, Jesus came and he said, I came to bring life abundantly. He's not talking about the things. He's talking about him. That's life abundantly. That, that you can be detached from the things. And all of a sudden, you don't find your identity in the things that you do, the things that you say, and the things that people say to you. Suddenly, your identity is simply in a relationship with God. That is real. This is not psychological babble. That is real. 
That is what God is able to offer us. In verse 24, it says, but Jesus didn't trust them. Why? Because he knew all about people. We are people. <laughs> this isn't just this group. OK, we can't look at them and go, oh, that's bad. No, he knew all about people. This is us. But again, I want to say this. This is what he came to set us free from. We can be set free. This is not for us to look and say, oh, yeah, I'm just I'm evil. I'm no, no, no. God's able to set us free. No one needed to tell him about human nature for he knew what was in each person's heart. He's able to see into it. But here's the beautiful thing. God is a heart surgeon and he's able to go in and cut it out. Even when you look at his disciples, the 12 that were following him, they had left everything behind and we say, that's amazing. But you know what? Just like us, why were they following him? They were following him for what they thought they could get out of him. They thought this guy is going to be the next ruler. So it's just like people who will follow that politician and they're fighting for him because if they get that position, man, they're going to get some payback. And so these guys, they had mixed things going on. They were seeing glimpses of the divinity of who he was and it was grabbing their heart. But they also had this human nature that they were fighting. And so they were following and Jesus knows this. Jesus knows there's this mixed motive going on in their heart and that part of the reason that they're following him is for what they can get out of him. And he's able to give it all. But what does Jesus want out of them? He wants to be with them. He wants their heart. Just like if you're a parent, every parent, what do we want? We want their heart. And we will do whatever it takes to get their heart. Again, do we find joy when they do well at things? Absolutely. But is that the ultimate we want? No. We just want the, their heart. We want to be a part of their life. God is the same. God wants to be a part of our life. And so because of that, God, like us, if you're a good parent, you will take things away from your kid if it's stealing their heart, if it's a danger to them. Even though it's a blessing, if it's a danger, you'll take it away if you love them. But here's the thing that God can't do, and here's the thing that you as a parent can't do. You cannot make your child love you. You cannot do it. You can give them every reason in the book to love you, but you can't make them do it. And so God is the same way. God cannot make you love Him, but He will do what it takes. And Jesus did the same thing with the twelve. Jesus won their hearts. But listen to this. He didn't win their hearts until after they lost everything. When did he win their hearts? After the crucifixion, after he had passed and they thought it was over and they lost everything. But then he returned. And in that moment, there was some soul searching as they were going through. And after Jesus returned, they discovered what they really wanted and needed deep in their hearts. And that was simply Jesus himself. And so Jesus won their hearts. And after that, what were they willing to do? Instead of using Jesus for what they were, could get out of him, every one of them died for him. Amen. That's where God wants to take us. God wants to take me beyond just being a preacher he wants to take me beyond just giving a certain amount of my income to him, being involved in church things, trying to be nice to people, you know, keeping my anger at bay, you know, because I want to be good. He wants to take me beyond that. He wants to take me to the place that I am fully sold out to him and I am simply a vessel of his. And here's the thing. Over and over, what God shows me is that's where I'm truly happy. I get distracted but then he brings me back and he shows me that's where I'm truly happy. He wants to do the same thing with each one of us in here. So now let's take it to application. What is he trying to cut out? What is he trying to set you free from? Don't let the enemy spin things around 
and, and tell you that God doesn't love you because maybe he's taken something away from you. Baloney. Maybe God has allowed something to be taken away because he loves you and he wants your heart and he doesn't want you finding your meaning, identity, and something else. He wants your heart. He wants, because he knows that that's where you will be truly free. And if he can get you to that point, he might just pour out some things on you because he can trust you to give it away. So what's God trying to cut out? Because here's the thing. He can't make you love him. You've got to choose it. I, I believe that God's goal this morning is to open our eyes and allow us to see it. But ultimately, we each have to choose. Am I going to allow him to do this? Am I going to surrender? Or am I going to curl up in a ball and kick my feet and say, God, this isn't fair? Because we can all do that. We can be the little entitled brat that says, I deserve this. I don't want to take that path because I don't believe that God is trying to keep something from me. I believe he wants to set me free. God wants to set you free. This question is, will you allow it? Will you surrender and say, okay, God, I'm yours? The results could be unbelievable. In your life alone, if nothing else happened, it would be unbelievable, but it won't stop there because you'll be able to display a freedom to other people that they long for as well. I want that. God, thank you um, that you love us enough to protect us from things that can steal our hearts that will end in death. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to bring life and to bring it abundantly to us. Lord, I pray that you will continue to open up our eyes and show us where that life is and what that life looks like. Lord, I pray that we would be people that can be trusted with blessings because we won't grab onto them. We'll just let them flow to other people. Lord, I want to be that person. Thank you that you are continuing to take us down that path. We just say amen to that. In Jesus' name. If you would stand, please. We're going to end our time worshiping in song.